So if you want to fly this, the DJI Mini 2, you're going to need the DJI Fly app, at least until they put out the SDK so that we can perhaps move on to third party apps. But for right now, we are going to need the Fly app. Now, the version of the Fly app you're going to want to use will be determined by the device that you're going to be installing it on. Version 1.2.1, which is apparently according to the Google Play Store on Android devices, the latest version. It isn't. You do not want to be using that version anymore. There is version 1.2.4, which if you are using an Android device, you will need to sideload. But that is pretty much what you're going to want to do. I'll show you how to in a moment. And then version 1.2.5 on the iOS devices is actually going to be the same version that is currently 1.2.4 on Android, which is why there's a little bit of confusion here. But that's because the 1.2.4 versions on Android are actually updated in the app from this point. Okay, so the build number in the app is updated in a way that does not happen on the iOS version of the software. Every time there's updates to the app, they have to be pushed to the Apple App Store. Now, for the majority of people that are just going to be downloading the app from the Play Store, not knowing any better, they are going to be saddled with that older version, 1.2.1. I'm not sure, again, why DJI are not updating the Play Store with the current release, but that is the version that's on there. Now, you can get 1.2.4 for your Android device, but you are going to need to sideload it. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, if you're an iPhone user, it's very easy to get the latest version of DJI Fly app. All you need to do is search for it in the App Store and the latest version will be there to download. So at the moment, that is version 1.2.5. However, for you Android users out there, downloading the Fly app from the Play Store is of course going to give you an older version, so the process for getting the latest version is a little bit more complicated. So I've made my way over to the DJI website, and you can see I've gone to the download section for DJI Fly, and you can see the QR code here. We simply need to scan this with our Android device. In fact, if you pause the video and you're watching it on another device, you can probably use the video itself to then scan the code with your Android phone or whatever. And once we do that, we should be able to, there we go, yep, uh, bring up tap here to go to the web browser. That's exactly what we want to do. Here you get a full list of compatible phones, which I'll talk about in a moment. And all we need to do is select this button here, download Android APK. You might need to enable third party app downloads if you haven't already, but you should get the prompts to do that. Okay, we're then just going to select OK here. And once that's downloaded, we can just select it. And then we can select Install. Okay, we can select Done or Open, whichever we prefer. But there we have it. This is that now the latest version of the DJI Fly app. So we'll go through the usual terms. Okay, so with the app downloaded, we're going to head over to Profile here. And what we can do is if we just scroll down to settings and then from settings, we can scroll down to about. And actually, no, if we just scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that the DJI Fly App version number there is 1.2.4 and 920 is the current build. So what's going to happen now is from the app itself, we can select check for updates. At any point, we want to see if there is any software updates to the app and that will probably keep the version number as 1.2.4 but will update that build number of 920. However, that same update on the iPhone is going to be presented as a whole new version number, so 1.2.6. But if there is probably any major changes going forward to the software, then it's very possible that that will still require a new download external to the app itself on Android and a possible version number update. But it seems that DJI, for whatever reason, have gone this very strange route of how to update their software. I don't think it's typical, but that's what we're working with uh, right now. Ugh, my main camera just died when I still had a couple of points I needed to make. First of all, phone compatibility. A few people have actually asked me in previous comments what phone I would recommend to use with the DJI Mini 2. Well, take your pick. Look at the compatibility on the DJI website. I'll even pop it up on the screen for you. And as long as you pick a device that's listed here, then you shouldn't have any issues. And if you do have issues, then at least DJI support will be able to help you. 
If you go for one of the latest generation of models, by the way, such as the iPhone 12 or the Galaxy S21, I think it is, then bear in mind, they will probably still work. My iPhone 12 works fine, but they are not on the compatibility list, which means if you do have any issues, all the DJI, DJI support is going to say to you is, sorry, that phone's not on the compatibility list. Try another device. However, if all you're interested in is what smartphone to get so that you can use DJI Fly reliably, then something like the Galaxy S9 is going to be a great choice, mainly because this is still an incredible smartphone despite being, I think, about three years old at this point. But because of its age, you can get these at a very reasonable price, about £150 here in the UK, about $170 in the US. And the camera on this thing easily rivals, in my opinion, the camera on the iPhone 12. Apart from the fact it doesn't have the wide-angle lens. Yeah, the Galaxy S9 is a good choice. Just remember, because it's an Android device, you will have to go through that little bit of extra hassle in order to get the app downloaded and installed. And finally, I have to talk about this because I have seen some confusion from others about it. The DJI Fly app, that's what we're talking about today, is not the same thing as the firmware software that is installed on the physical drone itself. So when I'm seeing others saying, oh, I've updated to the latest version of the Fly app and the range has increased or the range has been damaged or whatever the case may be, something else is at play there because that's not going to affect how the drone can perform. That is down to the firmware installed onto the device and that is not what we're talking about with the Fly app. Hopefully then we've covered all bases here today, regardless of what phone you're using. But if you're having any problems, then please do post those down in the comment section and maybe somebody will be able to share some pointers for you to get you on your way. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to be notified of future DJI Mini 2 content. And until next time, folks, happy flying!